Hey everyone, this is Dr. Clyde Letsom again, and today what we'll be looking at is the simulating of action potential or simulating action potential on a breadboard. So some of you may or may not know what the action potential is. Uh, so the action potential is actually a change in electrical potential or voltage associated with the passage of a signal along muscles or along nerves. Okay, so on the uh, screen right now, what you're seeing is the uh, time versus voltage graph of what one of these signals may look like uh, that is being passed from uh, cells, um, specifically mu muscle cells or nerve cells. And so you can see that when the uh, cell is resting, you have a minus 70 millivolt uh, voltage. And then as that uh, pulse is passed or that signal is passed, the voltage increases and then decreases and then returns back to uh, resting. Okay, and so this is actually the voltage difference between the inside and outside of the uh, cell. Um, I'm going to leave it up to you, uh, if you're in my class or in my lab, to see um, whether um, this uh, difference in voltage between the inner and outer cell is um, if it's related to the cell on the inside having a higher potential voltage or on the outside. That's part of the lab. All right, so let's move along now because the most important part of this video is to help you understand how to connect the actual uh, circuit so that we can uh, simulate this phenomena in the uh, circuit. Okay, and so on the screen you'll see a circuit that we're going to use for the lab and in this uh, lab or in this circuit you'll notice that we have two different channels one channel going down here one channel going down there uh, in this channel we have 8.9 volt voltage source and we have two resistors here and we have a switch that's in here it's a single pole single throw switch single pole single throw and that's what the SPST actually stands for over here in the other channel, we have 6.5 volts. Notice the direction of the voltage source here with the positive above and negative below. Okay, and in this one, we have two resistors. We have a resistor going on this part here of the channel, resistor going on this part of the channel. This one's 10K, this one's 100K, and again, we have another uh, single pole, single throw. Uh, part A here represents either the inside or outside of the cell. Again, I'm gonna let you all uh, figure that out during the lab. And down here we have part B here, which represents, again, either the inside or outside of the cell. So one of these, the inside, and the other one's the outside of the cell. And then these are two channels from the inside to the outside of that cell. Okay. And so now that you get an idea as to what the circuit itself would look like, let's go ahead and talk about how you would connect this onto a board. Okay. So if we were to connect this onto a board, this would just be my suggestion as to how to connect it. Uh, there are multiple ways to do this. You'll notice here though, the way that I decide that I would connect it is I would have the voltage source over here, notice plus and minus. Uh, rather than using the terminals up here, we're gonna use this line up here to represent either the inside or outside of the cell. Again, you're gonna determine that. And then this line down here to represent the other side of this, this cell, whether it's the inside or the outside. And as you can see over here, this is one channel with the one voltage source on here. This is the other channel going down here with the other voltage source up here, okay? And so what you'll notice is that I connected the circuit like this. So these, this is where the two uh, resistors in the one channel are connected. These are resistors here, by the way, the blue uh, rectangles here. And these represent from the prior screen the resistors that were over here and over here. Now you'll notice that there were two additional ones, this one and this one, and they're represented by these two, um, these two uh, blue rectangles here again being resistors. Now our switches are these components that are down here and these will be provided for you in the lab. Uh, one thing I'd have to mention when you're putting these switches to uh, into the circuit you have to check to see which part of the switch actually is normally open and so normally open that's what this circuit here represents is normally open and then when when we decide to push it it actually closes and makes a connection going along here okay so again when you're putting these into the circuit you're gonna have to check to see which one which part is normally which legs are uh, connected to the normally open part 
of the circuit. And the way that you'll check that is to connect the um, connectivity uh, meter to two of the legs. And if you get no sound, then that means it's open. And if you push it, push the button at the top, the little black button at the top, then it means then, and you hear a beep, then that means that it's closed. So that means that those two legs uh, will give you the normally open. But in general, though, you will have to connect the um, the component into the board as shown like this, or I would recommend it anyway. And so then you take a wire going from here down to this and a wire from here going down to that. And same thing with the other side. And so this it, uh, would end up giving you the um, connection that you need in order to uh, give you the first step of our um, action potential uh, simulation cell, uh, simulation uh, circuit, pardon me. And so when we start getting rid of all the lines that are not connected on here, you'll notice what remains then sort of looks like what was on the prior page. Uh, again, this is just one recommendation. You can also try another. Now, this is, again, the first step in putting together our action potential uh, simulation circuit. Uh, we also are going to need a capacitor. And so in the second circuit you're going to put together, you're going to need a capacitor over on this, this left side here. Um, I put it on the left side. You can put it uh, on any of the two sides, whether over here or over here. As long as that capacitor goes from the uh, one part of the cell to the other part of the cell, meaning inner to outer, outer to inner, again, you're going to determine that. And so once you've added that capacitor in there, then we have the same circuit for the rest of the circuit. And so therefore, then this is the capacitor being added. It goes from the uh, one end of the cell, uh, whether it be the inner part of the cell to the outer, outer part of the cell to the inner. Again, you determine that. And so th then the other part goes down here. And so again, now when we remove all the holes that are not being used, uh, what you'll notice is that we have a circuit that kind of looks like this. Yes, this does look like a mess, but it does uh, work when it comes to um, putting together the connection. So um, again, this was uh, a the way that you would simulate your action potential uh, circuit, okay, or simulate an action potential on a breadboard, which you can do uh, through circuits. And again, my name is uh, Dr. Pai Letsum, and so if you like the video that you saw, you can go ahead and like it on YouTube. Uh, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, or you can find out more information about myself on my personal website.